Hello, my name is Brandon Holman, and this is Radiation Safety Training, provided by Corwin Health Physics. This radiation safety training is intended for those that work with or around analytical and industrial x-ray producing equipment. Before we get started, here is a review of what I will be discussing in this training. I will mainly be focusing on what exactly is radiation and the effects and risks associated with radiation exposure. I will go over principles that individuals use to reduce their exposure, but know that the machine you utilize takes care of these principles for you. And finally, I will end with important and required postings you should have around your department. Most states require that there be some form of radiation safety training for those that work around ionizing radiation producing equipment. And most sites and facilities want this training so operators of x-ray equipment understand their rights and their risks. However, my goal in this training is to not only give you peace of mind when performing your job around this equipment, but to also give your friends and family peace of mind as well. And one way I can do that is to help you understand what is radiation. So, is radiation a type of dangerous and powerful energy that is produced by radioactive substances and nuclear reactions? Or is it the process in which energy is emitted as particles or waves? And finally, is it the energy that comes from a source and travels through space and may be able to penetrate various materials? Well, the answer is radiation is all of these. However, definitions two and three are much better descriptions for the basic concept of radiation, as radiation is just energy in transit. The first definition, which comes from a popular dictionary, is a poor depiction of radiation, as it really only describes a type of radiation. What is important to know is that there are two kinds of radiation, ionizing and non-ionizing. Non-ionizing radiation is in everyday consumer products and is around us throughout the workplace as well as our homes. The three items depicted here on the left, microwave, cell phone, or a basic light bulb, are examples of non-ionizing radiation. Remember, radiation is just energy in transit. Why these products, along with many others, are considered non-ionizing is they don't have the ability to produce the energy needed to remove an orbital electron from an atom, which is the capability of ionizing radiation when it interacts with all types of matter. Here's a good visual of the types of ionizing radiation and certain materials that can be used to shield these particles and waves. Alpha, beta, and gamma radiation come from various unstable elements known as radioactive material. And some of these materials can be used in certain analytical x-ray systems. Ones that are commonly utilized emit low levels of beta and or gamma radiation and are low enough where they don't have the capability to penetrate your skin. However, most systems use x-rays to analyze and or evaluate products. And you can see from this picture that lead is a great attenuator for x-rays. Because we mainly deal with x-rays when utilizing analytical or industrial x-ray equipment, let's briefly talk about their origin. Back in the late 1800s, Wilhelm Röntgen, a German professor, was performing experiments with a cathode ray tube. During these experiments, he noticed a fluorescent glow on the table near the tube. After more experiments, he realized he may have discovered a new ray and that it seemed to pass through heavy objects. He then wanted to see if it could pass through human flesh. Here you can see pictured the first radiographic image, which happened to be his wife's hand. Six months after his discovery, it was already being used in medical applications and in different industries. And the rest, well, I guess is history. Now, ionizing radiation isn't just produced in your machines, the medical field, or even the nuclear industry. It is all around us in our everyday lives. In fact, the average individual receives around 300 to 400 millirem per year from what is called background radiation. This is mainly due to uranium in the soil, which eventually decays down to radon, a material that is an alpha emitter. 
Other factors that contribute to background radiation are the different terrains. People who live at a higher elevation will receive more background radiation than those living at sea level due to cosmic and solar radiation. Now, on the next couple of slides, I will try to help you understand how we measure radiation and what is considered high levels of radiation using the measurement, millirem. Here is a list of annual limits we keep track of. I have them listed here in millirem and millisieverts, two common forms used to measure radiation dose. You can see that occupational rad workers, which include analytical and industrial radiographers, are allowed 5,000 millirem on an annual basis for their whole body. This number is not only more than 10 times higher than what is received from background radiation, it excludes your annual natural background radiation dose. And even most medical doctors who work around higher radiation producing medical equipment do not come within 30% of this limit. I show you this chart to not only help you understand your limits and how we measure dose, but to also help you understand that your doses are well within the occupational rad limit and probably more closer to that of the general public. And here is how we determine that your occupational dose is well below regulatory limits. The machines pictured here may look familiar as some of you may have these type of analytical x-ray systems. When I come to evaluate your systems, I'm not just checking some of the main radiation safety components, I'm also doing a survey around the entire system and in the room of the system to see if there is any radiation leakage and to measure the exposure in air. The exposure that I measure in air around your system and in the room is how I show and determine that doses to staff are well below regulatory limits. Most radiation workers that work in the medical field and nuclear industry use a different method to determine their occupational dose. They do this with a dosimeter, as pictured here on the right. However, individuals who utilize a cabinet type x-ray system, which is what you have, are exempt from wearing a dosimeter. In a way, my survey meter is your dosimeter as it determines the exposure in air. And with this data, we're able to show these exposures in air to be well below annual limits. The exposure in air that I measure around analytical or industrial x-ray systems are similar to measure background radiation, shown on this slide. Also on this slide are two common medical exams with a typical dose to the patient to help you see the difference between common diagnostic procedures and the exposure you may receive working with or around analytical x-ray systems. Now to put things kind of into perspective and to kind of see how maybe a chest x-ray relates to measured background radiation, if you were to receive 0 0.04 millirem per hour consistently for 25 days, after 25 days, you would have the same dose as a chest x-ray. So let's talk about risk when it comes to radiation. When looking at radiation safety, we tend to take the conservative approach and say that risk is proportional to absorbed dose, meaning the greater the dose, the greater the percent risk. And when we are talking about risk, we are talking about health effects, such as cancer. A typical dose an analytical or industrial x-ray operator may receive in a year is similar to background radiation, 300 to 400 millirem per year. However, doses below 10,000 millirem are not possible to accurately quantify risk. And we are talking about acute doses of 10,000 millirem or less, which is radiation exposure over a short period of time. And for this reason, radiation doses below 10,000 millirem are considered a low carcinogen. Here's another chart to consider when thinking of cancer risk from radiation exposure from medical or industrial fields. There are many ways to quantify cancer risk, but a good way is to look at other contributing factors, especially ones we are familiar with. You can see that smoking and a poor diet are the leading agents that contribute to cancer death. However, those that work in the medical field or industrial field where ionizing radiation is present, as you can see below, have a 0.7% risk of cancer death. Though this is all relative, it gives us a good idea of the risk involved when working around ionizing radiation from x-ray producing equipment. 
So even though we consider occupational rad workers as having low risk to certain health effects when working with or around ionizing radiation, we still utilize and maintain the ALARA program. ALARA is an acronym that stands for as low as reasonably achievable. This particular safety program includes many aspects, ranging from safety audits to different kinds of training, including the one you're listening to now. We ensure that radiation workers are keeping their doses low by two different investigational levels. We do this at your site by measuring exposure and air to show that the department is keeping doses below regulatory limits. All these items are performed to not only ensure doses are kept to LARA, but to ensure that radiation safety is a priority. Other safety factors that are important for keeping doses low are these three radiation safety principles, time, distance, and shielding. However, the nice thing about your cabinet x-ray systems is they do all this for you. My survey measurements around your system and in the room will indicate that your system has proper shielding where time and distance are not a factor. So let's wrap things up by looking at some typical forms and signs that should be posted around your department. Each facility that has ionizing producing equipment or radioactive material must have the notice to employees document. On this slide are example notice to employees postings from Oregon on the upper left and from Washington State near the middle. These documents are a notification to employees that helps you understand your rights and responsibilities and also provides contact info for the Department of Health. Also on this slide are some example signs that should be posted around your department. Usually the system will contain radiation signs and symbols on them. However, it is recommended that a radiation sign also be placed on the entrance to the room that contains the x-ray device. And that is it. Thank you for allowing me to provide you with this radiation safety training. If you have any questions or concerns in regards to this presentation, please don't hesitate to contact me either by email or at the number provided. If you want to know more about Core One Health Physics, you can visit us at our website at www.core1hp.com. Thank you.